can shut the engine off at stoplights um, and automatically restart it when it's needed. Um, and the effect of this is to dramatically increase your city fuel economy. So looking at the Ford Escape where they sell a very similar vehicle in a hybrid and non-hybrid mode, um, the highway miles per gallon improves uh, some, but the city miles per gallon improves dramatically. And that's because of that automatic shutoff, that's because the regenerative braking uh, really kick in there. The reason you get the increase in the highway mileage, and I've seen things that say, well, hybridization does nothing for your highway miles because the engine has to run the whole time. Um, well, yes, but. Um, they put in a smaller engine. And they can do that because the electric motor gives you the extra torque to give you the acceleration. Let me give you an example because I know the number's off my head. So in a Prius, the uh, Prius does 0 to 60 in 10.2 seconds. Not a race car, but certainly not an econo, underpowered econo box, right? But the engine's only 76 horsepower. Now, if it wasn't a hybrid, few Americans would tolerate a mid-sized car with a 76 horsepower engine. However, with the motor in there, you get the acceleration that you need with the smaller engine. The smaller engine is more efficient out on the highway speeds, and that improves your highway fuel economy as well. Yes, Phil? Um. I have to interject because I thought you would interject, <laughs> I was this is my industry. Um, the, just an anecdote, really. Uh, the, the numbers that you show on the screen are for conventional drivers. If you drive the same way you always drive, you will get better mileage in a hybrid. If you learn how to drive a hybrid well, believe it or not, those numbers can go up to 50 miles per gallon. In a Prius, you can get up to 100 miles per gallon. Do you have any good studies of that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I would because I was thinking about, you know, uh, what they call eco-driving, and you can actually get yeah. on a website, mm -hmm. that yep, yep. has one yeah. talks about how sure. to save gas, you know, mileage. And I didn't know if that, because my wife just got a Prius, and I didn't know if that, like, is that the same concept? Can you use that for hybrid, or is that you, different? And it doesn't have to be a hybrid. I have an engineer at work, uh, I, I work at Ford Motor Company, for those of you who don't know me. Uh, I have an engineer at work who has a manual transmission focus. Not a hybrid, a manual transmission focus. He adopted these driving techniques and has gotten 60 miles per gallon in a he standard in a standard manual tests. transmission focus. Yeah. You just learn how to coast. You learn when to shift. You learn you learn when to turn. You know things like that. The EPA used to do these uh, as competitions in the 70s. I remember mm -hmm. because there was all this flack about well the EPA rates at this mileage, but nobody can get that. Mm -hmm. And they would take college students who were not known for their modest driving and train them how to do this, and they'd have these competitions and they would all get better than the EPA rating and some of them twice. A lot of it has to do with how you drive the car. Thank you, Phil. Oh, I'm sorry. So we're told these plug-in hybrids are coming, and I've been holding my breath for a while now, um, but, but it, it should be imminent. Um, the idea here with a plug-in hybrid is that you enlarge the battery bank in the hybrid, and you can plug it in, and you can drive a certain distance on all electric. And if you drive further than that, the engine kicks on and it drives like a regular hybrid. Um, so you kind of get the best of both worlds, mostly, of an all-electric car versus a regular hybrid. Um, with a little added weight and complication, um, especially with a little added price. Uh, so we're supposed to have a plug-in Prius coming out this year. I don't know. The Chevy uh, Volt is supposed to come out uh, this year. I haven't seen that yet. Oddly, what we have seen come out uh, this year are two all-electric cars out of Japan. Uh, the Nissan Leaf is now for sale in Japan. They just announced the price at 4 million yen, which is about $44,000. There's a plug-in hybrid right outside. Yes, I converted to a Prius. Yes? Um, in addition to the price tag on the vehicle, I wonder with all these wonderful I was worried about, so I bought a 2005 Prius, right? And I was worried about it because, I mean, you just look at it, it's way more complicated. Uh, nothing's broke yet. And statistically, uh, seems to be, you know, that they did the engineering right and it's working, but yes? Geo Metro. Most expensive used car you could possibly buy outperforms all the vehicles that you recommend. Dollar per mile per gallon at about 50 miles per gallon. 
and the port for Steve. I own one. For over 200,000 miles. Got way up over 40. Paid 6,000 for it. Th there's a lot of hype in here, John. Dollar to mile per gallon to barrel of oil used. The Geo Metro wins with a three-cylinder motor from the Suzu. General Motors stopped importing them 15 years ago. Try buying one. Number one used car equity. Geo Metro. Going back a decade or two before that, right? The Honda Civic right. HFC, HCF, get the letter H S. Right? Good economy as anything on the road today. It was just lighter and the repair better. bills of the yeah. second and third generation working people who wind up with this stuff after the original owner or government worker somewhere making ninety K sitting in an office in Lansing can afford to buy one of these things. Pity the second or third person down the line. You'll never be able we'll to see. fix and keep it on the road. We'll see. There was a lot of concern that the battery banks were going to, uh, you know, fry after 8,000 miles, and and on the ones that have been out there, it hasn't happened. But gosh, it does seem like an awful lot more complicated. Something's got to be miles, John. Um, sure. I mean, I haven't done it personally, but yeah, there's plenty of them out there. And of course, there are policy encouragements. So uh, U.S. tax credits, um, there is a U.S. tax credit for uh, diesel, except that no cars qualify. <laughs> um, there's a hybrid tax credit that they set up per model um, that would be phased out uh, after the manufacturer sold 60,000 of those. And that was kind of a make sure the Japanese don't get all the money um, design. Uh, there's the plug-in hybrid tax credit, uh, which has a complicated formula, but it was designed to ensure that the Volt would get the maximum $7,500 tax credit to help take some of the sting out of the initial purchase price. Um, and again, that's phased out after the first 200000 are made. Um, if you look at the batteries in these things, right, so a Prius has got a 1 kilowatt hour battery, the Volt's uh, to have a 16 kilowatt hour battery. So it's a whole lot more batteries to give it that... Uh, that plug-in electric-only driving range. Now, if hybrids improve our fuel economy and diesels improve our fuel economy, what if you had a diesel hybrid? Well, first of all, we've had those on the rails for decades now. That's every train you see go by is a diesel-electric hybrid. Um, but they did uh, build some concept cars. Uh, this was the uh, Toyota ES3. Got a 105 miles per gallon uh, uh, average fuel economy. But you've got the added cost of a diesel engine, which is more expensive than a gas, and then you've got the added uh, expense of the hybridization, right? So there's a lot of how much money do you pay for how much mileage, which depends in part on what the price of gas is. But I think there's sort of a steady evolution here from the hybrids um, that, you know, we've got dozens of models to the plug-in hybrids that take that and extend the range to the all-electric vehicles or uh, maybe I'm wrong because the EVs are out already and the plug-in hybrids aren't yet. So that'll be interesting to see that. And I have people, well, an electric car, I mean, if it only go 40 miles or 100 miles even on a charge, and then you got to take a long time to charge it up, who could have that? Well, most American garages have more than one car in them. Now, if you only have one, probably that would be a real, real problem. But if you have multiple, one of them probably isn't going that far that day. Most of us commute short distances and we end up back home or we end up somewhere where there could be a recharging station. And so I think the, um, the drive range and recharging uh, issue has been uh, a little overemphasized. Uh, yeah, if it was going to be 100% of vehicles, that would be a real problem. But why would, why would, we, why would we think that? Yes, ma'am. 